Hello all and welcome to The Beautiful Game, the segment where we take a look at the poetic and brilliant side of the game that we love. This week we start in Scotland. <laughs> And that concludes the beautiful game. Why, hello there, my old chaps, and welcome back to another instalment of Football This Week. FTW, of course, is the series where I bring you the best and, more frequently, the worst of what football has to offer on social media. Now, last episode, quite frankly, was mental. So, I mean, I can imagine you're all thinking, it can't really start off or really get any worse than that. Wrong. All right, you didn't have to be so aggressive, Jesus. In the world of Twitter, it's been Alan Shearer versus Mike. Michael Owen. Is it me or does that sound like a flipping squad builder showdown or something on YouTube? Michael Owen and Alan Shearer just fully started going at it on Twitter. What even is 2019? Basically, Michael Owen has got a book coming out soon, like an autobiography or whatever. And in it, he basically ripped into Newcastle saying that going to the club was one of the biggest regrets of his career. All the fans are deluded. It's not a big club whatsoever. Michael Owen opens up on Magpie Spell and why he still regrets the transfer. Yes, Michael, we thought that also whilst on 120k a week. Jesus, <laughs> Ali. <laughs> Not sure you're as loyal to Newcastle as you make out, mate. I distinctly remember you being inches away from signing for Liverpool after Sir Bobby Robson put you on the bench. You tried everything to get out. For Michael Owen! This is the most entertaining thing Michael Owen's done since like 2003. And this is no ordinary chopper. It's got special powers, and once we're airborne... Thinking about it, this book could actually be quite a good cure for insomnia, so if anyone's struggling to sleep right now... I mean, I'm pretty sure Alan Shearer almost left because Sir Bobby Robson wanted him out, rather than Alan Shearer trying to force it, but we'll gloss over that for now. As much as it's a good comeback from Michael Owen, I don't know if I can support someone who celebrates this much after scoring against a child. Well done, he's 13. I don't know about you lot, but I reckon we need some sort of boxing event for these lot. Forget about KSI v Logan Paul or whatever. It's time for Michael Owen v Alan Shearer. Danny Mills v Robbie Savage. And after this weekend, you could probably put Mo Salah v Sadio Mane on the undercard. So in Liverpool's 3-0 win over Burnley, at one point, Mo Salah could have easily passed to Sadio Mane to score. Instead, he went alone. Sadio Mane, it's fair to say, was not pleased about the issue. Bobby Firmino's face is a picture here. Amused whilst also looking like a four-year-old child that his parents are fighting for custody over. So the UEFA Champions League and Europa League draws were this week and boy were they something. Eric Cantona won some kind of award. Definitely dressed for the occasion. And he whipped out a speech and you know you're thinking all right calm he's just gonna thank some people he's just gonna be appreciative to UEFA. As flies to wanton boys. We are for the gods. I'll be honest with you, it's been six seconds and I already don't know what he's talking about. He's come dressed as a 53-year-old uncle at a barbecue. We should have expected this from the start. It's just astonishing. As the speech just keeps going and going, people look more and more perplexed. Soon the science not what in the tits is this man talking? I spent a hundred quid on a rented suit for this fact. I'm not gonna lie, I preferred Eric Cantona when he was just whipping out knobs on Instagram. All right, true Geordie. Man City got their usual favourable group stage draw. So that's Dynamo Zagreb, Carlisle United, and in pot four, a three pound meal deal from Tesco. Virgil van Dijk was awarded with the UEFA Player of the Year ahead of Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi. Just look at that beautiful spot. Specimen. I'll have my children, Verge. I do understand why people were a little bit annoyed at this, you know, Lionel Messi missing out on this award. As much as I could completely understand if Lionel Messi won it, I don't think any player this season has changed fortunes like Virgil van Dijk has kind of on his own. That's just my opinion. I'm probably biased because I'm a Liverpool fan, but we move. It was a tiny bit awkward seeing him talk about his 4-0 win against Barcelona right in front of Lionel Messi, though. Ashley Cole was on hand to read out Europa League names. Probably wasn't the greatest idea giving that job to someone who can't do key stage two reading. Stad Rennes. Stad Rennes. Spania. <laughs> 
How are you going to see Espanol and read out España with such flair as well? All right, next out is Man Cajasta Unte. It's an English name, Ashley. What, what, what's wrong with you? The representative for Slavia Prague's reaction to the group they got was absolutely hilarious. He just genuinely started laughing. That is the face of a man who knows his team is going to get about negative four points in this group stage. Back to English football, the North London derby was this week. Week. Spurs took a 2 0 lead thanks to goals from Christian Eriksen and a penalty from Harry Kane, which was given away by Granite Xhaka sliding in from somewhere in Devon. But Lacazette and Abamayang made sure that Arsenal came back from 2 0 down to end up drawing the game 2 2. To be honest, Arsenal's biggest result of the week is probably Henrik Mikatarian leaving to go to Roma. Unfortunately, they couldn't offload Mustafi. He seemed pleased with the outcome. Now, Harry Kane was deemed to have dived in the final minutes of the game, and afterwards, in a post match interview Jeff Shreves actually made him watch it back I think it was that stage of the game. To be honest with you, Jeff, you are a skit for this. I'm about this close to double footing your shins. Celtic beat Rangers 2 0 in the old firm derby this weekend. Odson Edouard got the scoring going. They scored a second in injury time as Rangers were dedicating bodies forward. Jordan Jones was sent off with pretty much the last action of the game for a horror tackle, which saw him get injured for the season. Surely it's meant to be the other way round, Jordan. This is basic shit housery. There was no challenges like this. However, so therefore I can only really rate it a 6 out of 10 as an old firm. This man already has a better market value than Squadron Mustafi from this alone. But now, ladies and gents, it's time for ranting season. I swear to God, if I have to do another one of these about Cagliari, I'm going to kick over a wheelie bin. You know what's coming in into Serie A game against Cagliari before taking a penalty? Romelu Lukaku was racially abused by the Cagliari fans. This is now the sixth instance or something of this happening. They were the same fans that racially abused Mose Kane last year. They did it to Montari. They've done it to Kevin Prince Boateng. There's actually a video that someone's filmed where you can hear them doing monkey chants. <laughs> Now, this has happened so many times in Italy, I just despair. I don't expect the Italian FA to do anything because they never do. Leonardo Bonucci's out there somewhere probably saying, well, it's Romelu Lukaku's fault. He shouldn't have scored the penalty. But if games can be stopped because of homophobic chants like over in France, they should be getting stopped for stuff like this if you're going to go down that route. To be honest, I don't think you should be stopping games for stuff like that. You just should be punishing the fans that are doing it. Play 10 games in a row behind closed doors. Play a whole season behind closed doors. You won't see anything like this if fans are banned from coming to their team's games for a whole year. Staying in Italy, Juventus and Napoli played out an absolute thriller of a game. Juventus took a 3-0 lead. One of the goals was scored by Cristiano Ronaldo and he celebrated by not celebrating. Instead, he tried to make the Juventus fans calm down just in case it was ruled out by VAR. Napoli then brought it back from 3-0 down to 3-3 only for Kalidu Koulibaly to score an unbelievable own goal to gift Juventus the win again. Kalidu, you know the goal we're meant to score in is at the other end of the pitch, right? Yes, of course I know that. What are you even... I'm just checking because you know you've just like volleyed it into ours, you know? It's just... <laughs> Now, though, it is time for Still Nil Nil. You guys know the drill by now. This is the segment where we take a look at the best and really the worst of Sunday League football. So, first of all, we've got a throw in here for the team in red. They're going to try and play it out of defense against the team in black and white. The defender comes in for the challenge. <laughs> How's that gone in then? Imagine being able to put a tackle in and it somehow directly results in a goal. It doesn't even make any sense. And secondly, we've got this halfway line, which isn't really a line. It's just not straight, is it? I'm hoping the groundsman picked up his guide dog before the game actually got underway. The England national team are now sponsored by Deliveroo. Really gives a new meaning to players making a meal of it, doesn't it? You know what, guys? You're right. You're right. It wasn't a very good pun, but at least I've got lessons to take away from this. This
this guy again. He actually needs a statue outside the Southampton Stadium. Over in Greece, officials ordered a takeaway to the VAR room. To be honest, it might not even be them. It's probably Jesse Lingard utilizing the sponsorship at halftime. And finally, a Romanian fourth tier side had to forfeit their game this weekend because one of their players was getting married and all the others were invited to the wedding. I just hope he's at least planned his honeymoon in the summer break. That would probably be ideal. But that is it for football this week and I hope you have enjoyed yet another crazy one. It's at times like this I realise just how stupid football actually is. But if you've enjoyed this video then slap a like on it and subscribe if you are new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It's at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a great day. Enjoy yourselves and goodbye. Is it me? Is it me?